Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, we are gonna be talking about everything that I made in the month of December. It was a really, really busy month for me and I actually had six items of clothing planned, but only ended up making three because I had a few surprises in between. So let's talk about it. So if you guys have been following me on Instagram, I've been making sure that I am showing everything that I'm making in my stories, mid projects and whatnot. So you probably would have already seen the three items of clothing that I already made. Those of you who are not following me on Instagram or are just waiting for the video, this is what I made. So the first thing I made was a dress. Surprise, surprise. Not just any dress though, this one is a ball gown. I was invited last minute to a winter ball and uh, yeah, the dress code was black tie, formal attire and I was just like, well I don't have any of that but I'm gonna make some. So I was very, very excited and then went through the whole process of trying to find what pattern, what fabric, and basically only having like six days to make it. That's how much notice I had. I had six days to come up with the concept of the dress, find the fabric, make the dress, make sure it fits, and then wear the dress. And you know what? I did it. If you check my stories, I'll put it in a highlight for you guys. You will see that I went through this whole process of trying to find different fabric and matching things together. And in the end, I thought simple is best. So I ended up making this green, like high necked, like long, dress and I absolutely love it. Now it doesn't look so great on the hanger so I'll show you a few pics of me wearing it and I will also make sure I wear it in this video so you can see what it looks like on and on camera. So I made this dress using a very easy Vogue pattern. It was pattern number 9373 and it's basically a high necked um, sleeveless dress with princess lines that go all the way down and it's kind of fluted at the bottom and it is floor length. It comes in two different lengths. View A is about um, maybe mid ankle length so it's like a midi um, and view B is all the way down to the floor. So I went with view B and I used this green silk satin which I had in my stash. So I did actually shop my stash um, and this is what I decided. There were so many other colorways, but I thought, you know, green, it's quite festive, and I really like gr how green looks against my skin, and this is actually a really, really nice luxurious fabric to have against your skin. So I used this fabric. Because I wanted this to be full length, um, it does need, like, between, I think it needs like four and a half meters of fabric, and I only had like 3.75 of my fabric. But I made it work. The thing that I changed from this is I didn't actually line this, which is absolutely crazy when you think about it. There's no way I wouldn't line this, but the fabric was kind of heavy and it had its own drape. And after doing a few checks in the light and holding it against myself, I knew that once I sewed it up together, you wouldn't really see the seam lines or any lumps and bumps through the fabric. So I just went ahead. So in order to like close, the armholes and the hems. What I used was bias binding. Basically, you sew it along the outside, then you flip it to the inside, and then you sew it down again. It gives you a really nice clean edge and no like raw endings. Um, modifications I made to this. Didn't actually make many, I just made one. Apart from not having a lining, I also included a thigh slit. Now, some of the seams on the inside, I could have finished better, but I didn't really have a lot of time to deal with this. So I just made sure that the seams that you could see when I'm walking, when I'm dancing, when I'm standing, are the ones that have a uh, bias binding around it. Now that I know how easy this is to put together, I will probably make a lining and add it to this, uh, just like unpicking the neck and just kind of adding the lining and then putting the neckline back on, quite easy to do. I also know that this will probably be like my, my go-to formal dress if I ever have like a last minute event to go to it came together so easily guys it is a beautiful pattern really intuitive just long straight seams no fiddly things no darts none of that just two princess seams and then a neckline seam and then and then adding an invisible zipper and a few clasps at the back and that was it very very easy so i would highly recommend anyone to use that pattern if you're looking for something that's like quite formal or using the midi version for like a cocktail dress really really cool really really love this pattern this was vogue 9373 highly recommend. So the next item that I made in December was this sparkly number. Now this was also to go to another Christmas party. This one was uh, somebody having a party at their house but they have a very very big house in like the suburbs of West London and there was like catering and it was it was incredible. It was incredible and I really wish I had vlogged it for you guys. I felt a bit like bad just like filming inside someone's house so I just enjoyed it. I'm sorry guys. I'm not sorry. I had a great time and the invitation basically said sparkles wear sparkles and I was just like 
I can do that. I can wear sparkles. So I made this number and this was the first time that I had any real experience making like a full outfit with sequins. I've worked with sequins before, but only on a really small scale for like a bag or a purse or something like that. But this was like a whole dress, like a whole dress. So this is another very easy Vogue pattern. This is pattern 9350, and it is basically a wrap dress. Now it isn't your standard wrap dress, which usually has a tie on two ends and a hole in one side that you can thread through and wrap around. This wrap dress had a tie on one end and then a tie in the seam line of the other one and you kind of wrap it like you would like a robe to the side. So I did make a modification after kind of making it that way and realizing that I did want this to be a full wrap dress. So instead of having a tie on this side and then a tie here, I actually put a tie on this side and then I put a tie on the other end and then I made a little hole in the side and kind of bound it like a buttonhole and used that to make it a full wrap dress. Other modification I made on this was making the sleeves a lot more balloony. did this by copying the sleeve pattern and then doing a slash and spread and making sure it was a lot more voluminous so then I could get that really nice puff ball bit at the bottom and then I also raised the cuff by one inch so that it was a little bit longer a little bit more dramatic and a bit more party the kind of vibe I was going for was like studio 54 meets Christmas um, and that's what I got with this wrap dress now the good thing about wrap dresses is that you can wear them in multiple ways which is why I kind of turned it into your traditional wrap dress instead of how the pattern makes it and uh yeah so i will show you like the different ways you will see that you can wear it like the traditional way um you can wear it kind of like a robe on the side or you can tie it in the middle in an actual knot and that is how i actually wore it to the party and i just wore it bare legged with some heels as you can see i lined the bodice and i only like i lined the bodice only i did actually film a video uh of the process of making of this because it was a long one so if you guys want to see that it's kind of like vlog style i will um upload that for you guys and you can see how i actually like the process of me making this but um i did line it initially all together i realized that i didn't actually like the lining at the bottom it made it not drape as well so then i only ended up lining the top half and then i left the lining out of here and i also left the lining as you can see out of here and what I did was use the bias binding method to uh, hem the edges in just like a, a nice like beige which kind of complements it and that was pretty much it this was an absolute hit at the party everybody asked me where did you get your dress from and to someone who makes clothes it is like the magic words that everybody wants to hear oh my god that's great where did you get that where can I buy that and then you can turn around and go oh this old thing oh I made it and that's pretty much what I did all night this is my dress made from a very easy version 9350 another one that comes together really really quickly highly recommend and if I can give you one tip for sewing with sequins go for the simple patterns the simpler the better if you go for something really complicated with like flaps and darts and whistles and zips and whatever it will get really really messy and trying to navigate all of those sequins will just drive you mad so that's why I went with like a simple wrap dress only a few seams I had two darts to do at the front which was actually quite easy so it was a little bit of a process actually like sewing the sequins um but what i did was uh mark the seam line with like a thread by threading around the edges so i can see how big the seam allowance was and then i actually spent about two days snipping all of the sequins out of the seam allowance then i can just sew them together normally in the end i ended up doing that to like three quarters of the project and then i got really bored with it and then just started sewing you probably shouldn't do that but what i did do was change my needle to like a heavy duty one that would be able to deal with just like bashing free sequins but I wouldn't recommend but it got the job done so I'm really really proud of this one it was my first like real attempt at sequins I would definitely have another go um, there are different kinds of like sequin patterns and they behave differently on different fabrics this time that where, where it's kind of a uh, flat and scattered was actually pretty good so really really happy with that I will just add one more thing though make sure you have a hoover handy because dealing with sequins is messy it's been a whole month and i still have sequins everywhere and i've hoovered my house maybe 500 times since then i'm finding sequins everywhere especially in places where i've not even been there with sequins that's where i'm finding them now so i think my cats might be uh moving them around the house but like yeah make sure you have like some sort of hoover device nearby <laughs> So the final thing that I sewed in December is probably the project that I am the most proud of 
like so far out of everything that I've made, even that acne style leather jacket. This item is the one thing that I am like super proud of. I made a ski suit. Yeah, like I can't believe it either. I am still like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I made this. Now this has been a labor of love. Oh my gosh, guys. I started this project about a year ago. A year ago, we were meant to go skiing and I was just like looking at all that ski gear because like my ski stuff that I had, some of it fit, some of it didn't. And I didn't think it was that cute. And you know, I like to try and look cute everywhere including the snow so i was just like what can what's out there there are some really really good ski brands out there but you know what they also are they're also very expensive and there's one brand in particular that i saw and i was just like oh my gosh i need this ski suit she looks amazing when i saw the picture and it's called cordoba now they have these really nice they're like skin tight cat suits that are waterproof and like good for the snow and all you do is just put your ski boots on and you stick your hat on and then you just go and you look like a bond girl and it looks amazing and ever since i saw that i was just like that's amazing but they're one thousand pounds one thousand pounds like who though who's buying that like okay people are buying it but like i'm not buying that so what i did a year ago when i discovered them is get myself down to the nearest like designer department store which for me is selfridges to see if they sold them which they did i tried them on and then i took five thousand million pictures of the insides to see how can i make this and also started to learn about those kind of like outdoor waterproof fabrics. Now the exact brand that these like ski companies use are usually wholesale only, they're not available to the public. So I needed to see what was like the next best thing that you could for like home sewers that they could use that is waterproof and weatherproof and you can go outside in the snow. Cause people must be somewhere in the world sewing their own like weather gear. I mean, like what about the people who live in Sweden or what about the Alaskans or what about the people who live like in really cold countries, but also sew? like what are they sewing? Surely they're sewing some like outdoor things that are like waterproof and also like heat proof or whatever. Heat proof? Okay. I came across like loads of different websites that sell active fabric and that's where I discovered um, soft shell. So soft shell is basically a fleece. It's a soft shell fleece where it's fleece on the inside so it's nice and insulating and warm and on the outside it is basically a coated material which makes it water resistant. I found this fabric from activefabrics.co.uk. So I started making myself a ski suit last year. I used different colours. I had like khaki green with cream and black and it was going really really well and then my trip got cancelled and I was like oh okay well I'll just put this on the back burner and I kind of just left it alone fast forward to this year um Sam and I decided that this year for our end of year holiday that we go on every year we're gonna go skiing we're gonna try and be better skiers we've got all this equipment let's go skiing and then back on track so as soon as I knew that we were skiing we booked it we're gonna be up in the mountains I was back into looking at all those ski suits now I decided that the stuff that I started on last year didn't really like the colors anymore so I bought this really really nice like teal color and then I decided that I was gonna use this uh, cream color and kind of do like some nice color blocking thing so looking for a pattern that's gonna work was also a little bit of an ordeal um, and for this I ended up using like a combination of two different patterns first one was McCall's 7908 which is basically a jumpsuit suit pattern. The reason why I use this is because I really really liked the bodice. I liked the princess seams that were coming down the front. I liked that it had like a zip up option and I also knew that the neckline was something that I could modify myself. So it was a really good like base template that I could use to start my pattern. And then the second pattern that I used for the bottom half was a quick sew pattern. After looking and realizing that the only ski wear patterns are vintage ones because apparently everyone used to just make their own ski wear in the 60s these no one's doing that now which is a shame because I, I could have done with that pattern I did end up having to go on Etsy and found this really really cool vintage pattern seller called one pattern at a time now she had these really nice um quick sew ski pattern which is basically um they're like slim fit stretchy pants with um stirrups so that you can put them on your feet and then put your boots on underneath so one of them was just a pair of trousers and then the other one was like a kind of like dungaree suit and i think they're called scallopettes um i think that's what they're called i may have that wrong i'll put the word down here scallopette something like that and basically it's like the ones where you wear a jumper underneath and it's like you're wearing these like long dungarees so i thought that would make a really really good like bottom half and also if i have time then i can make one of those scallopettes and have like two outfits i didn't have the time just one ski suit 
So what I did was use the bottom half of that and then use the top half and kind of join them together. So the few modifications that I made was like, I made a high color, I added side pockets, and then also just this design detail of all the color blocking. So I wanted to make this as legit and as waterproof as I possibly could. So I even got waterproof zippers. This one is waterproof. These two are also waterproof and they are not easy to find guys. Uh, if you can't find the proper waterproof zippers, you can use PVC ones um, and they're basically plastic coated and they're kind of made like invisible zippers. So it's like a plastic invisible zipper. They're quite chunky, but they will still do the same job. I made sure to line the inside. I didn't have a like lightweight fleece. So in the end, I ended up lining this with a swimwear fabric because I know that swimwear fabric can deal with um, sweat and can deal with like wetness if I get really, really hot, but it's also a little bit breathable. Um, the soft shell fabric is also quite breathable. So I thought that would be a really good substitute because I'm not trying to buy more fabric. So that is the substitute that I made for that. And I didn't line the legs, but I also lined the pockets with the same swimsuit fabric. So they're quite flexible inside. And I also made them big enough that I can fit my phone in there because you know, obviously you need to take selfies while you're on the mountain. Um, yeah, as you can see, I also, Here's the stirrup legs. So essentially the whole thing was actually fairly simple to put together. The thing that made it difficult was dealing with the actual fabric and also putting together two patterns and trying to make them into one cohesive pattern. So that was like my struggle, but it wasn't too much of a struggle. And if you watch my Instagram stories, I made a highlight of my DIY ski suit. You can kind of see the process that I went to of like, should I make a belt? Should I not make a belt? I did actually make a belt, but I ended up not wearing it because I, I just didn't really feel like it needed a belt. So this is by far my proudest make of 2019 or even proudest make of the decade. I think it's amazing. And we will be going skiing again in the end of March and I will be wearing this again. I might even use the khaki green one, which is unfinished to kind of like use the same template and finish that one and then I have suits. If you're looking to make your own ski suit, seeing as there aren't any modern ski suit patterns out there at the moment, you can go ahead and look at, look at bodices that you like the look of, look at bottoms that you like the look of. Maybe there are a few jumpsuit patterns out there that you can modify into something that you can wear out on the snow. The key thing is to make sure that you have a waterproof or a fabric that is good for wearing in the snow. And when you have fasteners and zippers, that they are also waterproof because that's like the way that the water might actually get inside. So as long as you've got those things covered and you've got some sort of layer of heat protection on the inside, like a fleece, you will be fine. So this is my make and I'm just so, so happy about it. So yeah, that is it. Those are the three things that I made in December. And honestly, just those three things were like three things that I found challenging, but also easy, but three things that I'd never done before. I'd never made a ski suit before. I'd never made like a formal ball gown before and I'd never really worked with sequins. Okay guys, so that's it. That is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, then hit that like button. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have you worked with sequins? queens before would you make your own ski wear are you even into making your own sports wear let me know let's chat in the comments if you haven't already then subscribe and if you have subscribed then make sure you hit that notification bell so you can see when i post that next video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video